Hello and hope everyone's doing well out there. Welcome back to my channel. Straight to the facts here, we're gonna keep this video brief. As you may have seen from my previous video, this truck's been having a lot of transmission issues, among some, uh, a few other little issues as well, which we'll get to in just a second. I've been having a lot of fun with this truck for the maybe one or two tanks that it worked uh, out of the maybe 15 tanks that I've run. Um, and as you know, we've been having some three speed transmission problems. So currently, uh, as you know, from my last video, I was trying to struggle getting the thing to shift at all. And then when I rebuilt the transmission and put new gears in, which were stripped, I was able to finally get it shifting to um, uh, shifting both one to two and two to three. Uh, and here's some footage of that real quick. You heard that one, right? Yeah. That was three. Okay, one more time, right? Yeah, hash. Three. Okay, one more time, right? Okay, one more time, right? Okay. So as you can see, it was working really beautifully there, and uh, you know I, I was doing it, testing it out there on the curb because uh, when I was testing it out on the uh, the off road and trying to get some videos, you know the the the, the engine bouncing around, going ing 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 ing, kind of you, it's kind of hard to dis, um, you know, actually no, notice the shift sometimes. So I put it there on the uh, on the curb there, so you guys can really distinctively hear each of the shifts. And again, it was working great for about 15 minutes, and then I went to refuel it, and then suddenly it wasn't shifting the third again. Uh, no matter what I did with the adjustments, it just wouldn't shift in the third. Take it back home, re, uh, you know, disassemble the transmission again. I find out that my third gear, my new one, which I had just installed, was also stripped again. No idea how. After just 15 minutes of use, uh, didn't crash anything else. And also my second gear was almost close to being stripped as well. And I'm not talking about the teeth on the outside. I'm talking about the cam on the inside was stripped. Uh, where it's the the clutch uh, clutch bell is supposed to hook onto when it's uh, when it's time to engage uh, it is stripped in there. I don't know if you can see that close enough there. I'll try and get some close ups in, um, but you've seen that in the previous video. So again, I don't know what Kyosha was doing with that. And then to top it off, again constant issues with the gears. And then to top it off, this is the shaft for the transmission. This is the second gear cam, and this has a one way needle bearing in it. And I don't know if you can see, but that needle bearing is smashed and mangled to pieces. You can it's kind of hard to see here, but there you can see a bunch of pieces in there. Basically, the needle bearing fused itself to this center shaft. It's supposed to be sliding around with a one-way bearing. It fused itself, and um, I had to basically bash it off with a mallet. It was inc with an incredible amount of force. That left a few little gouges inside my shaft here, and trying to find one of these in the U.S. is near impossible. I can't find any. Kyosho themselves don't have them. They're out of stock. Anywhere in the U.S. is out of stock. The only places I can find are on eBay and there are people charging like four or five times the price and it's coming from like Italy or Germany. Um, so what I did, and I'm going to go ahead and reassemble it and shortly and after this video, is there were some slight gouges and when I was putting the one-way bearing, this is the first gear one-way bearing, when I was putting it on there, you could really feel those gouges, uh, you know, affecting the needle bearing. And I knew if I was to reassemble it that way, that needle bearing, my new one that I got, because I just got the new parts for the second gear, um, would also fail. So what I did is I took a small file and it seems to have worked. Uh, I took this little tiny little file here and very lightly, you know, not to take material off or anything, but I was able to kind of file down those little burrs from the, from the gouges. And I mean, you can kind of still see them very, very mildly, but now when I slide the one way, one way needle bearing on, yeah, I'm not really hearing any effect from those gouges really doing anything. Uh, to uh, to that needle bearing, so I think we should be good. I'm gonna go ahead and put it back together, just because I, you know, I don't know what when I'm gonna next be able to get my hands on one of these things. Um, I have reached out to Kyosho, I've reached out to A Main Hobbies, who I purchased this truck from, letting them know about all the issues I've been having, as well as other people. Uh, you see, you probably find numerous videos on YouTube already. Uh, shout out to RG, I believe his name is. 
Uh, he's also got a few videos of having some transmission issues with his brand new USA one. So hopefully they'll, they'll address it. But um, you know, I don't know when the next time I'll get another shaft is. So I decided to go ahead and just MacGyver it. And, you know, it seems to may have, you know, I, I may have done my best. Again, what I did is I just slid this and, you know, rotated it very, very gently. And it seems to have smoothed those, those gouges out. So hopefully I won't have those issues um, and what I'm going to do is also lube those needle bearings up heavily. I think that's one of the issues. These needle bearings were not lubed from the factory and these things need lube. Um, don't use grease on the needle bearings because it's just, it can cause more failure. Uh, if the grease allows, will, will kind of cause the needles to stick either above or below the channel and other needles will take the load. So use an oil. I got Liberty oil. I don't have it with me right now. It's in my car, but, um, I bought that on Amazon. I read that's really good for bearings. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure that those new needle bearings I'm going to put in uh, are nicely saturated with that oil. And, uh, and then we're going to put this all back together. Now, I'm not going to bother wasting time putting it back together in this video because if you want to see a dismantling video of the transmission, check out my previous video I did. Uh, but we're going to get this back together. And uh, so this has just been a quick short video update. I know some of you guys have been waiting for my update of what's going on with this video. So I just wanted to share a few of those clips with you of the three speed actually working for a short amount of time while it did. But anyway, I'm going to get this thing reassembled, re going to make sure it's properly lubed up. Uh, and then I'm going to post another video, uh, probably going to get this back out to the field. I'm excited to try and get it back working. I'm going to go back out to the field tomorrow, hopefully get some nice footage for you guys. Um, and then we'll post an update there. Anyway, that's been Turok. Hope you've enjoyed this quick short update. If any of you guys are also sharing similar issues with your Kyosho USO one, please share it in the comments. The more visibility and attention we can get around this matter, then hopefully Kyosho uh, will start to address it because it's just unacceptable. You know, $500 RTR having this many issues out the box. Uh, it's just been mad. And actually the cherry on top, before we wrap up the video, I forgot to mention the last issue I had. I was driving around, you know, the other day uh, just before these issues happened. And then suddenly my engine died on me and uh, I'm wondering what's going on. I try to start the engine. It's not starting. And then when it did start, it was incredibly quiet because it was being flooded with fuel. I could literally see fuel splashing out the carb. And uh, every time I pulled the pull starter, it was as if I was uh, priming the engine. That was how much fuel was getting sucked out of the fuel tank. And no matter what I did, I couldn't figure out what was going on. Like I thought maybe my carb was done, like the O-rings had blown, there was some kind of leak in my carb. And again, I didn't understand how this could all be happening within like, a, you know, I'd only run 10, 15 tanks in this truck so far, brand new. Um, I was doing my head in, asking people in forums, what's going on guys? It just suddenly ran rich, like it was running great, it was tuned for that day, and then suddenly just boom, and it died. And no matter what I did, it was just running rich, splashing fuel out the carb. And then eventually, lo and behold, I'm trying to figure out what's going on. And I shake, I don't know what it was, but I shook my, my truck. And this is the original Kyosho exhaust, as you can see. Now, hear that noise? The baffling inside, I found, came loose and would then slid down and it was then blocking this port. And, and thus causing extreme amount of fuel pressure and then pushing a bunch of fuel into my fuel tank. Uh, I mean, pressure into my fuel tank and then into my engine. Kyosho, what's going on here with your quality control guys? So, you know, when this, when I found this, it was a true light bulb aha moment because after three days of trying to scratch my head, like what the hell is going on with this truck? I was truly like ecstatic finding out that this was the problem. Now getting one of these was also kind of hard to find and they're like 50 bucks, which is ridiculous, especially, and I felt like I didn't want to pay 46 for 50 bucks for something that's already failed on me. So anyway, the, the, the muffler that I've got on here right now is a replacement that I got on Amazon. Uh, if you guys want the link, just post a comment. I'll try and share it. But this one I found on Amazon, uh, which is basically a direct replacement. As you can see, it's literally the same exact size. I think it may have been a millimeter or two over, but I was able to use the same mounting hole uh, and everything else. I did need to extend the fuel uh, pressure line a bit because the nipple here is facing the other way versus forward. So you do need a little bit of a length, uh, sh lengthier uh, pressure tube. Uh, but other than that, it fit exactly the same. I didn't even have to replace the um, the coupling here. I only just changed from this point forward. It, this exhaust system that I bought did come with all this all for 18 bucks on Amazon. And, you know, and personally, this thing was way more polished and good looking. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but this thing is way more nice looking, way more polished. And, you know, to compare it with this Kyosha, I don't know if you can see, but this is pretty much how it came out of the box. There's a bunch of scratches on it. It's not exactly polished like they advertise it. Um, and it had a bunch of scratches on it, you know? So, and then worse, obviously that baffling came loose and I didn't even crash. 
I'm just driving around and then suddenly it happens. It just dislodges itself. Now, it's kind of hard to explain, but I mean, if you look down in that hole there, right now you can see that exhaust port is open. Now, if I shake that back down and you look in there, it's closed now. There's something closing it off and that's the baffling inside. Such a head scratcher. And when I, when I figured this out again, it was, yeah, it was a big relief. So anyway, all these problems I've been having with the Kyosha, as you can see, this thing's not even three weeks old. Um, man, yeah, this just, yeah. I really want this thing to work really well because for the small amount of time it was working, it was great hearing the three speed shift, especially with that truck body on there. It was fantastic. So anyway, I'm going to get this thing reassembled and, um, and then hopefully on the next video, you're going to see some footage of this thing back out on the field, hopefully shift in properly. If not, you're going to see another update from me, uh, perhaps with some updates with what Kyosho or A-Main Hobbies have suggested as a, you know, as a next step. So yeah, Kyosho, big letdown. I thought you guys were all about quality. You know, after all these years, you'd expect a 30, you know, a truck that's over 30 years old that, you know, you wouldn't have these kind of problems. Uh, you know, a lot of us trusted you guys uh, buying this thing on release or close to release, thinking that, you know, you guys have your stuff in order, but this is just, you know, unacceptable for an RTR. I'm, I'm sure you agree and put it in the comments if you're having the same issues. But anyway, enough waffling from me. I'm going to go ahead and get back to work. I'm going to get this thing fixed. I've got all the new parts, the second gear cam and everything. I'm just really hoping that this shaft doesn't fail on me and cause my needle bearings to fail somehow because of the tiny little nicks in it, but I've done my best to try and remove them, so... Anyway, see you guys on the next video. Take care out there. Stay nitro for life. Peace.